Yeah, um, I'm 52, almost 53 years old, come from Scotland and uh, moved to Germany about 14 years ago. Um, how I found myself, like you've seen in the picture before, is another story. Uh, like most people, I think I led what we would call a fairly average life. Uh, doing an average job and thinking, yeah, like everybody else, I'm just average. But none of us are average. We are all exceptional, and it's just finding and bringing out that little bit of exceptional from everybody. <laughs> it's going on behind me. Great, guys. So what I found myself doing was, one day I was coming home from my average job on my motorcycle, and uh, yeah, I had an accident. I uh, ended up with a fractured uh, leg, broke my ankle fairly badly, required three operations, and after some rehabilitation, I um, thought, yeah, everything's great, and I can go back to my average life. But um, somebody else thought differently, and of course, on the very evening that I was giving the permission to go back to my job, and with the extreme sport of dog walking, I slipped on ice and shattered my right hand. Uh, took seven operations, 17 screws and nuts and bolts to join my wrist back together again. So I got home after that and uh, sat there wondering what was I going to do with my life. The doctors had said to me, you'll no longer run because of the first accident. And then they said to me, you have to get a desk job. And I had never worked in a office environment. So I sat there and decided, oh, well, let's have a look on the internet and let's see what we can find. And I scanned through YouTube and I come across a very motivational man called Elliot Hulse. I don't know if anybody's heard of him, but he uh, runs a YouTube channel, or did do, called Strength Camp. And from that, I got pretty much inspired and thought, oh, actually, you know, I want myself some of that. I'm going to try. So I started off with the very basic stuff of doing push-ups with one hand on the ground and the other one like this. So I looked like the guy from Scary Movie, if you've ever seen it. I had my strong hand, then I had my normal hand. And uh, it took a bit of time before I could put both hands on the ground. Um, and from that, I decided that uh, I was going to beat the odds. I was going to become a fitness trainer. That's what I did. I became a fitness trainer, qualified, and yeah, I thought, that's great. What's next? So I decided that I was going to go back to school again, and now I was going to learn to be a boot camp instructor. That's what I did next. Became a boot camp instructor and started my own company. We're called Fit Monkeys. We're a little bit crazy. And uh, decided that we would do outdoor training all year round. So I've been running that for five years, and then during that time, also through the internet and YouTube, I came across stuff like Tough Mudder, Strong Viking, Xletics, so OCR, Obstacle Course Racing. I decided that that was going to be the, my sport of choice, so I took it up and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And that's how I got pretty well muddy, as you see in the picture there, or what was there, and um, started taking groups around, became an obstacle course instructor, took groups around on Tough Mudder, went on to do World's Toughest Mudder 24 hours in the desert running. Uh, just last week, we did 20, or 24 hours in Spain, obstacles and running. And that all comes from somebody who was told, you'll never run and you'll never lift anything ever again. 
Uh, don't ever believe anybody when they tell you stuff like that, because it's just not true. You can do far more with your mind than you can imagine what is possible. And through all this experiment, experimenting with myself, with my body, we came across something else called the Wim Hof Method. Now this looked pretty tough. I never really liked the cold. I, in fact, I hated it. My wife takes cold showers regularly and often would invite me to do exactly the same. And my answer was, no effing way. Not a chance am I ever going under a cold shower in my life. Well, things changed. And um, I became interested in exactly what was this Wim Hof method? What did it mean? What, did it, what can it do for your body? So we looked into it. We started to find that there was these crazy breathing techniques. They really worked. And in fact, I got underneath my first cold shower and thought, wow, this is awesome. I felt so energized and alive, more alive than what I ever did in my life before. At that point, we then went to actually see Wim Hof himself in Berlin. And there was a guy there with a Wim Hof Method instructor's t-shirt on. And I thought, yeah, that's for me. That's what I'm going to do. And the guy said to me, well, John, you know, it'll be the coldest week of your life. I thought, still, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have that t-shirt. So we went on the Wim Hof journey. And through that, we discovered biohacking. And that's what it was all about. It was about being able to actually take control of your body and mind, being able to control your nervous system, being able to suck it up, as they would say, getting out, really getting out of your comfort zone in some of the most adverse environments. We learn to be able to control from the sympathetic into the parasympathetic. So sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight. You know the one where we get fight or flight? Fear, aggression, anger. The other one, a good analogy, is the lion who's in the savannah and there's a zebra eating his grass and the lion's lying there sleeping. Parasympathetic. The zebra is eating, rest and digest. The lion's lying down, not doing much, rest and digest. But then the lion decides there's a tasty bit of meat there. So the lion gets up and he starts going into hunting mode. That activates his sympathetic nervous system. It means that he gets a lot of adrenaline pumping through his body and cortisol. His heart starts pumping faster. The blood starts to flow into his arms and legs. And now he's full on hunt mode. The zebra now sees the lion and thinks, whoop, time to stop eating. Same thing happens. His heart starts pumping faster. The adrenaline cortisol starts pumping into his body. His pupils dilate and he's like, oh, here we go. Then the lion chases the zebra. The zebra runs. In this scenario, the zebra manages to escape. The zebra escapes. The lion doesn't get his dinner. And within a few minutes, the lion will turn around, walk away, and rest. He'll look for someone to lie down and recover. The zebra will keep his eye open for a few more minutes longer, and eventually he'll settle down and go back to grazing on the grass. That would be a scenario where most of us should be living. We live our lives in stress, that's continuous, and it's not good for us. Unlike nature that knows short-term stress is what we should be living in. So with the Wim Hof Method, we learn to control our stress levels through our breath. We learn to control the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems, which have a direct influence on lots of other systems within our bodies. Um, Included in the method also is cold. As we see here, we have a bath filled with ice. So, um, 
Yeah. We're now going to get ready to go into the ice bath. So right now, my body is telling me it's not a good thing to do. In fact, my heart rate's increased. My adrenaline's starting to come out. My cortisol has been released into my body. And my arms and legs want me to run away. But like somebody said earlier, I think it was Paul, getting out of your comfort zone is really what can define us and being able to strengthen not only our minds, but our bodies. Preparing my brain for getting into here. And sometimes it takes a little bit of breathing, but it's not too bad. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and we can discuss things as we go along. I might just have to take this off for a second. Or is it like that? Can you hear me okay? <sighs> so if you have any questions, you can ask away, please. It's not a problem. It's a little bit of cold water. But yeah, right now, now, just through those couple of breaths through practice, I've now set up my body down into the parasympathetic response. And um, some really beneficial things happen within the body now. The, um, as the body settles down, the veins and arteries within my hands and my feet, legs will now shove all the blood into my core and brain, protecting my core and brain. At the same time, as I relax and settle, there's a nice release of dopamines and endorphins now traveling through the body. Another part of the brain called the periaqueductal gray is activated, and the endocannabinoid system is now online. That produces an effect that uh, we don't no longer feel any pain, but we do get a nice piece of euphoric feeling and it's not too bad. And it's easier than what most people would think. And of course, the best part is that uh, it reduces inflammation, calms down the immune system, and swaps it over to an anti-inflammatory system. Inflammation being the main cause of most autoimmune disease, diseases in the world today. Inflammation caused by stress. Here, a short-term stress, produces a positive good effect, and uh, also now we'll swap the systems over from being uh, in an inflammatory state to an anti-inflammatory state. So there's many, many good benefits, not only just strengthening your mind and body, but also strengthening your immune system. And uh, yeah, it's a nice biohack for your body, and uh, yeah, there's a nice, uh, also a very nice biohacking community here in Riga. So guys, they're maybe be doing stuff like this, so check them out. If anybody would like to join me, you're welcome. <laughs> Come on in, the water's lovely. <laughs> Any questions? So you are doing the same training that do the sportsmen after doing after practicing tennis or football or something like that? Yeah, um, you see it that most people, if they're doing uh, running sports or stuff like that, they'll take a bath to take away the inflammation. That's used in endurance sports. That's why they do it. They wouldn't do it in a strength-based sport where you want to grow muscle because you need inflammation to grow muscle. Yeah. And in this case, if you're using it to just uh, reduce the inflammation so the next again day you can get up and do something else again, boom, up you get and do it. Okay. So, no. uh, 
Do you consider better to swim in cold water instead of just lying? Um, this is more uh, a practice, not just for your body, but for your mind. Swimming in cold water, it's fun, but you'll cool down faster because of the movement. You know, it's also uh, going into an ice bath isn't as tough as going into a cold river. You know, if the, river, if the water's moving, it draws away the heat faster from your body, so your body has to work faster. Um, but also the added effect or benefit, I'm going to come out now, the added benefit of an ice bath is also that um, it creates, if we control our shiver, shiver's what we need to warm. Thank you. It's lovely and warm, by the way. Top class service. <laughs> so if you think that um, shivering is the body's natural way of warming, Oops, the little slippers folded over. But with the method, we learn to take control, or at least what we would do is we reduce the shivering. And um, we build what's called brown fat, a substance that we all have, but many of us no longer have enough of. We live in an environment that's continually kept at room temperature. 21, 22 degrees. So our bodies get used to this. And in actual fact, we lose a lot of our brown fat ability. So brown fat is built up through the extreme changes in temperature that your body is made to survive. It can do it, but it's telling this part that it can do it. And um, through the breath work that we do, and through the cold training, we train our whole systems. I mean, just now, even in here, in your body, there are 125,000 kilometers of veins and arteries within your body. I just trained them all by getting in there. I made them all close, and then I made them all open again by getting back out. So I'm training my arteries and my veins at the same time. Big other problem is a lot of cholesterol in people, specifically built up in the veins and arteries because they are not moving, they are not closing, they are not opening, they are continually opening and blabbing, staying still. And with that, they don't actually move on the material within the body, and it begins to stick on the walls, builds up, and produ produces blockages. All right, can I ask you a question? Yeah. My name is Kaspar Zvendelis, and I'm uh, one of the co-founders of the Biohacking LV movement. Hi, Kaspar. And uh, on every Sunday on the Lake Babelitis, 11 a.m., there yeah. is the swimming sessions. So everybody, I, this is more like an announcement, but also the question to you, are you coming this Sunday? Am I invited? <laughs> For a swim. Yep. Let's do it. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Um, sure, let's have some fun. Take a swim in the lake. Hi. Hi. My name is Martin. I'm the founder of Collective Intelligence Research Center. And my question is more related to the stress levels and how you manage them. Uh, no doubt you just experienced massive body stress yeah. while you entered the, the, the cold bath. Uh, so where, where does this uh, come on the opposite side to start being beneficial? Is it some kind of like control stress or... Is it, is it, uh, is it, uh, and, and, and how does this compare to contrast shower that I use personally? I think this is quite enough for me. I never tried what you do. Yeah. Um, you know of you stress, which is a good stress, short term stress. Yeah. So, how to control this is done just through actually focus. It's connecting this with this together, it's finding this connection within the body, within the mind and then and relaxing into it. At first, people will get into a bath like this and they'll <laughs> and it may take up to a minute and a half before they adjust, but with training, it gets faster and faster and faster and it gets to the point where you step in and you're there. So you're learning to control the sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. And it's just a training thing. It's just a training. It's like working a muscle. 
It's exactly that. So cold shower is the first level. Cold shower. Entry level. No, no. The cold. Sh this is. The ice bath is like the the showpiece. You know, it's the one that people want to see. Can you do it? You know, you put it, you put them in the, underneath. If I have a workshop and I put you underneath a cold shower, you would say, I can do that every day. But when I fill a bath full of this. The first thing that's there is fear, and you're in fear mode, and you're like, oh no, it's going to be cold, will I manage it? And you're learning to overcome your fear, and this is what it's all about, stepping out of your comfort zone, overcoming your fear, because you're not average, you're way beyond it. Hey, uh, I'm Mikos from Blockchain Free Accelerator, and uh very good. It looks very good. So what's the call to action? How to start? What would be the call to action? How to start this? How to start? Um, we have a breathing method that you use. You can download the app for free. Uh, the Wim Hof Method app doesn't cost anything. Teach you the basic breathing techniques. And you would start with a cold shower. You would start off with your normal hot shower. And then you would Switch it from hot all the way over to cold. Maybe you'll do 10 seconds, 20 seconds. You do as much as what your body will allow. But what we like to try to do is to advise people to get to the point where their breath is under control. Because if they come out of the cold shower while they're still in panic mode, they haven't controlled the system. But if they can stay under it until they get into the calm breath, then they've reached a point where we can say, okay, that's the first level of control. I can now step out of the shower. And then you would then extend on that time. So it may take you 20 seconds the first time. It may take you 30 seconds. And then you can build on that. So you can practice 20 seconds one day, 25 seconds another day, 30 seconds another day. Go for a whole week on 20 seconds. You just have to learn to listen to your body and pay attention to it, but don't let it rule you. Just to pay attention that you have control over it. Yeah? All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other question? Yep. Hey. Dun, 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 Hello. Dun. Hello. Here, in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, my question, I have actually two questions. One is, what are you eating? And also, uh, a statement. Uh, would you agree that uh, Wim Hof method is a like trained team uh, within your cells that can operate really well, but uh, food w would be uh, like a building bro building blocks that the team would use to build up your new perfected body? Um, no. <laughs> diet is basically a free choice. You're free to choose your diet. Um, we have, uh, I mean, we have over 100,000 people around the world, and they vary in all diets. People who have vegetarian diets, vegan diets, normal meat-eating diets, whatever. I'm a vegetarian. Um, How long, if, if I may ask? Oh, just a few months, you know? But I d it didn't, I've been doing the method for two years, and there was, there was no difference between then and now. But, so well, the, the, uh, the, the same question uh, you should answer in, let's say, five years. As, as I just uh, stepped out of the vegetarianism uh, after s six years, yeah. and uh, basically just uh, kind of blood marks. I, I see that you, you can't really build up your body if you're missing the initial blocks. Uh, you can have like energy, uh, and like your body can operate really well. But if you're missing like certain ingredients to build your body, like collagen to make your basically nail and and, and skin and uh, hair grow properly, uh, that's that was my conclusion after uh, being in vegetarianism, uh, enjoying it. But mm -hmm. uh, with with time, uh, I felt like it builds up. And uh, it's either getting back to natural food uh, as a whole, or or uh, looking into supplements. That's uh, my expertise. Uh, can you comment on that? Yeah. Um, 
I think that uh, we are omnivores, we are made to eat all things, yeah? And um, rather than supplement, we can use, I think we can use other stuff. We don't have to really go into supplementations. I mean, like you could use it. I would use eggs, for instance. I like eggs. Uh, milk products are not my thing, but I will take my proteins from eggs and not, not so much from meats. I like fish. I still eat fish every now and again uh, because of the, the fat oils and, and acids within them. I think we need them. Uh, I just don't think that we really need to be... I, well, I don't, actually, I don't actually trust the meat industry enough to say that I want to eat it. That's a problem. Um, even in the... Uh, what we call the organic industry. It's, I mean, what is organic? The don't feed the cattle any antibiotics, don't get the cattle any antibiotics for four weeks, then get the stamp organic. It's like, you know, we're being somehow fooled into believing that what we're eating is natural. Great, thank you. And uh, I must say, I also kind of got back to fish, not really meat. So yeah. I think vegetarianism is not really eating fish or anything uh, that was moving. And uh, I was just look, looking into insects. I believe that's a huge part of uh, the future of diet. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. This, nice. no, yeah. Anybody else? All the way to the front. <laughs> Um, would you say that the cold water or the breathing is more important part of the Wim Hof method? Because I've been, I've been now taking only cold showers for probably more than a year, and that's my normal mode. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really doing the, the breathing, so maybe you can relieve of my you know, feeling of guilt of not following the method properly. Okay. <laughs> um, both are a double edged it's, it's like a double-edged sword, and they both work together. The breathing itself, the big effect is the, the lift in alkalinity within your blood. Because the way the breath works, we, de, we take a lot of the carbon dioxide out of the blood, yeah? And we increase the oxygen level. When we remove carbon dioxide, our pH levels go up. And then we take a breath hold. With doing this also now, we start to release a little bit of stress hormone, adrenaline and cortisol. That also has a direct effect on your immune system because cortisol is an, is an immune suppressor. So the immune system drops down a little bit. It comes back down again. And um, as your alkalinity comes up, and as your carbon dioxide starts to rebuild up on the, on the breath hold, your alkalinity drops back down again as the carbon dioxide rebuilds. And then um, you'll have a, another part of the immune system. Well, then again, we have uh, interleukin, certain proteins, IL-8, IL-6, uh, and TNF. They're all inflammatory markers within the blood. Because of the alkalinity, they're dramatically less. And then we have one called IL-10, interleukin-10, which increases the anti-inflammatory markers. And, um, and that's one big effect of, of the breathing method. Uh, also, you have your happy hormones being released also with the breathing. You have the vasodilation, the vasoconstriction, because carbon dioxide is a vasodilator. So as we remove it, the veins start to close down, but as, we, as it builds back up again, it starts to open up. The acidity is reduced because carbon dioxide's real name is carbonic acid, yeah? And as that then, as the uh, resistivity is reduced and the alkalinity goes back, comes up, our bodies come back to its natural state. Your pH level, 7374. A lot of people under stress are 72, 71, 7. But even dropping down one point from 7.3 to 7.2, you're causing a lot of uh, health effects on your body. And this has a direct effect on your cellular activity. So the breath 
has a big effect that you're really giving your body oxygen. And oxygen is what you need to make energy. Without it, you can't make energy. It's... The main question is, what do we need to live? And what's breathing doing? People say, it makes me live. But it actually produces energy. Your cells need it. They need it to be active. And without it, they are not active. They are tired. They're sluggish. There's like, you don't get enough sleep. If you don't get enough sleep in the morning, you wake up and you're like, ooh, I never had any sleep last night. I feel terrible. That's how your cells feel when they don't get enough oxygen. So they are trying to steal energy from the neighboring cell. So it's all about the breath as well. Both systems together. Diaphragmic breathing. When was the last time you took a full breath? Actually filled your lungs. When was the last time? Can you remember? Ten seconds ago. Ten seconds ago. <laughs> Try it. Try it. Go through your nose and suck right down deep into your belly. Lift it all the way up into your chest and then just let it out. And you'll feel a relaxing effect from it. Here we go. Anything else? Oh, okay. <laughs> If I, if I may, the last question. Yeah? Uh, what is your personal best for ice bath here in the very front? Personal best? Yeah. Um, time is irrelevant. Of course. Yeah. We virtually never time. But yeah, in not an ice bath, but in two degree flowing water, 10 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, John, for the Thank amazing you. performance. Thank you. You definitely deserve a fortune cookie. Okay. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. you so much. And by the way, tomorrow John will have a workshop at 12 yeah. p.m. Lifestyle Lounge. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can put it here. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> Lifestyle Lounge, 12 p.m. tomorrow. There will be yoga mats, but better take your own as well. If you want to go all in with John and his breathing method. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you.